Hello and welcome to this film which is all about period 3 chlorides and it's the second in a series of five films about higher level periodicity. In the first film we looked at the physical properties of these substances, now we're going to look at their chemical properties and that is to say how they react with things and in particular we're going to be looking at their reactions with water and we'll see if by the end of this film we can write some equations to represent these reactions and also use these equations to explain why the solutions that form will be acidic. So first of all, let's remind ourselves of what substances it is we're talking about here. And they're sodium chloride, magnesium chloride, and aluminium chloride, all of which you'd expect to be ionic, except as we covered in the last film, this one is a little bit unusual. We've got silicon tetrachloride, phosphorus trichloride, phosphorus pentachloride, and chlorine chloride, or just chlorine. And these guys here are all covalent molecules. Okay, so they're the ones that we're going to be covering in this film, and you'll see there's some patterns to be observed, so hopefully not too much new learning to do. Although, unfortunately, there are quite a lot of facts here to commit to memory. So let's start off with the ionic chlorides, sodium chloride and magnesium chloride. We should know that when you dissolve a solid that is ionic in water, it will break up into ions. So writing an equation is quite simply writing the solid, and then it's aqueous ions over here. And in this particular solution that we formed, we've got two neutral ions. Now, that will mean a lot more to you once you've done the acids and bases topic. But um, for now, let's just say that this produces a neutral solution. This equation here with magnesium chloride is a very similar equation, except I've forgotten to put the plus sign in the middle. Okay, And we've got magnesium chloride breaking up into its aqueous ions. This solution, on the other hand, is not neutral. In fact, it's slightly acidic. And we need to understand something about the nature of the magnesium ion if we're going to understand why this is. So the magnesium ion, which is quite highly charged and also quite small, because of these things, it's called, quite a, it's called a polarizing ion. That is to say, it di distorts the electron clouds of other molecules. They might think, well, why has it drawn a, a molecule of oxygen here? Well, if you remember, in a solution, the negative ends of this polar molecule will approach the positive ions in this direction. And if this positive ion is able to distort this electron cloud of the water molecule and pull electrons towards itself, that will mean that there will be fewer electrons available for bonding in the water molecule. So in other words, these bonds here will become weaker. And if those bonds become weaker, then it becomes easier for this water molecule to lose H plus ions. And H plus ions are what make so solutions acidic. So in other words, the magnesium ion affects the water molecule. It polarizes it. It makes it easier for these bonds to break. And it increases the concentration of H plus ions in solution because these H's can fall off the water molecules. Now, magnesium is a polarizing ion, but aluminium is an even more polarizing ion. But before we look at that, let's just have a look at the equations. OK, we've got two different equations here, depending on how much water we add to aluminium chloride. If you add just a small amount of water, so maybe a few drops of water to some aluminium chloride, you're going to make aluminium hydroxide, and you kind of get this kind of spluttering as this hydrogen chloride gas forms. Now, you can imagine if you used a little bit more water, that this hydrogen chloride gas would dissolve in water and produce hydrochloric acid. So we'd expect to see quite an acidic solution. But if you use a lot of water, so there's one equation we need to remember. Here's another equation we need to remember. If you add quite a lot of water to aluminium chloride, it will dissolve in the water and produce what are called hydrated aluminium ions. This is kind of a complex ion, which we'll cover what complex ions are in a bit more depth quite soon. But what you can see here is you've got an aluminium 3 plus ion surrounded by six water molecules. And as we just decided in the previous slide, magnesium with a 2 plus charge is quite polarizing. It's able to distort the electron cloud of water molecules quite a lot. Aluminium is even smaller than magnesium, and it's even more highly charged. So it's a really quite a highly polarizing ion. And this means that the water molecules' bonds will be even weaker than they were in a magnesium solution. So in other words, this complex is really very good at losing H plus ions. So we can end up with 
this complex forming from it, where we've got five water molecules around the aluminium, or even fewer than five, but one of them has lost an H plus ion and become a hydroxide ion, if we've got an OH minus ion as part of this formula, we'll see that the charge is only two plus. And then that's going to release H plus ions. But as I say, we're going to cover more about these complex ion formulas in subsequent films, so don't worry about them too much just now. Just remember that aluminium on account of the fact that it's such a highly polarizing ion, can cause water's uh, bonds between its oxygen and its hydrogen to break and end up with H plus ions in solution, and that makes the solution acidic. So as I say, there's a few factual things to remember in this film, and in particular there's the equations. We're going to move on now to the covalent molecules, and as you can see, even more equations to remember. I suppose if you want to cut down on the amount of facts or simple facts that you're remembering, then maybe it's good to spot some patterns. And hopefully you can see here that all these reactions, and like the aluminium chloride in fact, are producing hydrogen chloride. And it's when this hydrogen chloride dissolves in water that the solution becomes acidic. But we can also see here that we're forming some other acids as well, which also make the solutions acidic. Anyway, let's just quickly talk through these reactions. You have to remember these equations, so make a note of them and try and start memorizing them. Silicon tetrachloride produces silicon dioxide and hydro or hydrogen chloride. Um, the two phosphorus chlorides produce different forms of acid here. This is phosphorus acid, this is phosphoric acid and they're both producing hydrogen chloride as a byproduct. And chlorine, when you dissolve it in water, also actually produces HCl, and it also produces hypochlorous acid, which is bleach. But anyway, I'm not going to spend too long on this page, because really what's important is that you remember the equations, and you can stop here for as long as you like and write those down. So anyway, as I say, it might seem like there's quite a lot to learn in this film, it's not a terribly long film and not really much understanding to do, but there are quite a lot of factual points of information that you need to remember. So try and spot some patterns in amongst the equations. Try and remember that there are things in this film that you've learned about before, like ionic solids breaking up into ions when you dissolve them. And Try and sort of say to yourself that I know some of this stuff already. I'm not going to have to reinvent the wheel altogether. Anyway, hopefully... Um, the stuff that we've done there makes sense, it is largely factual, but in case there's any questions or queries or comments, please feel free to come and see me or to post a comment on YouTube.